Hello everyone. My um, screencast is about dialects and accents and what is actually the difference between of them. What is a language? That is also a question that we want to answer. So what is a line, what is what is a language? Well there's actually no, some people say that there's actually no difference between a language and a dialect that is constantly evolving and changing. According to Max Weinreich, a language is a dialect with an army and a navy. And if you refer to Yugoslavia, so back then, um, a couple of years ago, Yugoslavia was one country, they had an army and a navy. But now, Yugoslavia is divided into several different countries, Serbia, Bosnia, and so on. And all of these different, uh, all of these um, se separate, separated countries have an army and a navy. But their language is not really a language, it is a dialect from the Yugoslavian language. Max himself is Yiddish, and the Yiddish people don't have an army nor a navy. But, but the um, Yiddish, Yiddish is recognized as an official language, so we can state that a language is difficult to define. What well, is a dialect? A dialect is a variant of a language. It has a huge range of different accents, so if we refer to West Flanders in Belgium, West Flanders is the dialect. And Newport is a, has a different accent, so a different variant of that dialect. So the, so the um, accent in Newport uh, than the one, for instance, in Bruges. So they, will, so they pronounce some words differently. Also, it's most of the time regional and it trims with a lot of words and expressions. And these go back to their linguistic roots. For instance, in Britain, that is um, the Celtic, the Latin, the Norman roots. The vocabulary can be rather confusing for some people because they don't have these expressions or words in their dialect or language. And the origin, the origin is, for instance, work. If you, if your um, your city uh, was actually an in, in was actually a city that used to have a lot of factories in an instance, then some words uh, from that time uh, is integrated, is implemented in your dialect. And when we look at this, so if you look uh, on your left, it is actually the, the county of Yorkshire. And the county of Yorkshire, so that dialect has a huge range of different accents. For instance, if you go to Barnsley, so Barnsley, if you look at the map on your right, you see Barnsley over there, you see with the arrow, no, so that arrow, okay. And if you look at Barnsley, Barnsley is still in the county of Yorkshire. And you go from Barnsley to um, Bradford, to Bradford, well, um, then there uh, the dialect is actually has actually so the accent of Bradford is a different form is, is different is actually different than the one in Barnsley that's actually what I mean about that and when you go from Barnsley to Sheffield Sheffield is still in the county of Yorkshire then you come across then you come across then you then then you bump into an isogloss and an isogloss is like if you look on a map and that specific area, so in, in this case Sheffield, has a distinct language feature that that Barnsley doesn't have. So it, that that thing is completely different. And when you go from Sheffield, Sheffield, as you can see on the map, is in the county of Yorkshire. And you go to the county of Derbyshire, and you go to uh, Chesterfield then it's like you enter a complete different country. They use, um, they pronounce words com completely different, complete, they pronounce words completely differently, and yes, it's rather, it's rather weird, but it's normal. Received pronunciation. So received pronunciation, if we think about it, we think about the Queen's English. And if you speak like that, then you have a social advantage because you don't reveal your social background. And that is a good thing because if some people um, have a tendency to look negative to uh, a certain group, certain 
uh, part of a certain dialect. For instance, if you are Scottish, then some people will will actually look negative to you because you are Scottish. But if you speak with an RP with the with received pronunciation, then you don't reveal then you don't reveal your social background. Or if you're from the working class and you speak with um with RP, then the people won't know that you are from the working class. The original receive of received pronunciate of received pronunciation is actually it was actually a dialect in the southeast of England, and the southeast of England was well a lot of people lived lived there back then. Um, it was the home to the royal courts and etc. And William Caxton lived there as well, and when he introduced the printing press, well he used that dialect as a standard form of English. And so he used the pronunciation, the spelling of that language. And so William Caxton had a great influence on the um, on the creation of received pronunciation. Also the public boarding school. So um, the people who went there um, spoke with the with actually with received pronunciation. Why? Because it was like it was the language of the gentleman um, of, of of status, etc. Also, BBC had a great influence on received pronunciation. BBC stands for British Broadcasting Corporation. It was founded in 1922, and um, well, the mid the people from the middle class who were educated spoke with that accent. And if you wanted to work there, you needed to have a correct pronunciation of the of the uh, English language. But why is it called BBC English? Well, the, the announcers wore um, dinner jackets, and therefore we call it BBC English. But there's something really remarkable. So during the Second World War, a, York, a Yorkshireman, Wilfred Pickles, spoke with his Yorkshire dialects. And the reason for that was that the Nazis could speak with um, received pronunciation, and if they would invade, um, if they if they if they invaded um, Brit if they invaded um, for instance the BBC broadcasting station and they would speak with um, the RP British uh, with the RP British accent well people would think that they are from from Britain but an accent is a, a dialect from a specific region is really difficult to impersonate it would be the same thing if a if a person from Paris would actually, uh, if, if a person from Paris um, went to West Flanders and uh, speaks, try, uh, tries to speak with, um, well, if a person from France goes to goes to West Flanders and tries to speak with um, the uh, with the with the with the accent from Bruges, that is almost impossible. Because you're not from that region. You and non you. So Professor Alan Ross uh, wanted to uh, differentiate between you language and non you language, so upper class and middle class. And because only the language distinguish, only the language distinguishes someone from you. Distinguishes actually you from non you. Um, Example. So, do you have a bath? Do you have have the verb to have indicates that you speak with a you. Then, then you're actually using you words in that uh, context. But if you say, um, I, do you take a bath? Then you speak with well a non. Then you are then you're actually using a non you construction. But the social uh, language uh, has been has been has been beginning to has been beginning to loosen, which is a good thing. So a lot of people are now using U words. Um, so everyone, um, the Queen's Eng the Queen's English um, has become more and more standard form of uh, of RP uh, British accents. More and more standard form of RP British accents, and there is a creation of estuary English. So there's actually um, a language between. Um, RP and a dialect. We have the same thing in um, in Belgium. 
the feeling of an accent well the georgie people so the people from New newcastle are really proud of their accent it's a warm and friendly accent and the thing is an accent um has an in has has if you speak with um a dialect then there is actually an emotional connection because there are mo more emotions more history behind it and what do i mean about what do, do i mean about that well if you go um for instance to paris and you are you from ghent and you meet someone and you hear that he's from ghent then there will be like a connection because you're from the same region from the same region you have something in common and that is something that um a standard form of a language doesn't have but if we, if the people in Britain uh, want to speak to someone in authority, then they will use RP. So this was my presentation. I hoped you liked it.